know, that's the foundation of our party. And But the reason I think that we get those criticisms is we don't talk about what I consider the second part of the map, <coughs> shown in the next slide. Restitution. Yeah. So the second part of the map is those who violate the non-initiation of force principle should restore their victims to the fullest extent possible. Because you know, I don't care how strong of a libertarian you are, I imagine that you can think of a place where you violate the map. So if I'm standing next to you on a street corner, and I'm looking at my cell phone, and I step out in the street and there's a truck coming, and you pull me back, you initiate physical force against me. Am I going to be unhappy with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. I will not be asking you for restitution. But you see how the idea of restitution tempers when you can initiate force and when you can't. And if you look on the internet, you've seen some absurd criticism of the map. Like, okay, if you're really a true libertarian and you're falling from a building and you grab on to this balcony and the guy comes out and says, that's my balcony, it's my property, I don't want you on it, get off. If you're a true libertarian, you'll fall to your death. I don't think so. <clears throat> Of course not. You'll stay on the balcony. You'll trespass to save your life. And you'll expect to pay restitution. Now, what's that restitution going to be? Well, for most people, first of all, most people wouldn't react <laughs> the way our imaginary owner of that balcony did. They're going to say, oh, you're going to help pull you into the balcony, right? They're going to help save your life. But even if they don't, even if they want some kind of restitution, if they say, well, give me everything you own because I just saved your life, and you disagree with that, reasonably so, you're probably going to take it to an arbitrator, a judge, whatever the system is, and of course, that person is going to get a really bad rap in the media. And most people won't risk their reputation like that because, of course, it's, it's really kind of insane in a way not to want to help somebody who's, who's uh, you know, got in that situation. So what if you and I are hiking uh, and, and something, well, let's put it differently. What if you and your child are hiking and your child has an accident and he's bleeding and you're out in the wilderness and you're you don't know what to do, but you notice that there's a house, you know, some, maybe a vacation spot or something, a house there, and you want to have your, you want to, you want to have that car that's in the garage or standing out in front of the house, but there's nobody home to ask. Do you put your child in the car and take him to the hospital? You probably do. Knowing you're going to have to pay restitution of some sort, and you don't even know what it is because you don't know how much inconvenience you're causing the other person. But again, as long as you're willing to pay that restitution, whatever it is, that sort of balances this whole initiation of force thing. And that's why I think it's very important to put that restitution into our principles. And that gets rid of a lot of the criticisms against the NAB.